So why in the world would you build an M.2 SATA enclosure just like this one that's a lot slower than an M.2 NVMe enclosure? Let's talk about it. Welcome back to the channel. So what I'm gonna do in this video, number one, I'm gonna show you this really cool enclosure by Ugreen. It's actually just a 10 gigabit per second enclosure, but it's really cool and it's, it's not that bad as far as cost. So I'm gonna show you this thing. But then I'm gonna answer that question for you. Why in the world am I building this thing here with a SATA SSD in it when I can put an NVMe drive in this as well? Why would I pick the slower SATA SSD drive, M.2 is the form factor, but why would I pick that versus an NVMe drive in this? Tons of people always ask me, they say, Craig, why are you doing that? Let me explain a few reasons. Let's get into it. All right, and before I even get into that, another question people ask me is, why wouldn't you just buy a Samsung T7 and be done with it? Why do you build your own? Well, number one, it's fun, right? But that's not the real reason. Um, number two is gonna be because, let's just say you have a T7 from Samsung, it's a pre-built external SSD drive, and it fails, right? If it fails, you gotta buy a new one, there's not much you can do. With something like this, or let me just actually say, if it, actually if it fills up as well, if it fills up in space, you gotta kinda put that away and file it away somewhere, you can't use it again. Something like this, you can literally take the drive out. If it fills up, you can take it out, store it somewhere, and put a new drive in. Or if it fails, you can just replace the drive and then you have an enclosure that still works. So those are the reasons I kind of buy and make my own. Plus it's fun. All right, first of all, let's take a look at the enclosure. So here it is right here. Now let's look at my screen over here. It's $31.99 and this one's by Ugreen. And a lot of people are gonna say, why spend $31.99 when you can get these things for a little bit cheaper as well, right? Well, this one comes with a full aluminum chassis. It's really nice. It's space aluminum, space gray aluminum, and it comes with this nice bumper. I'll show you close-ups as I'm talking about it. But overall, I dropped this from about four feet as a test, and I didn't even make a mark on it. So it's really rugged too. Really nice, really looks good, and it feels it's all really solid aluminum, right? That's number one. Number two, though, is this thing can take both S um, NVMe drives and SATA drives. So it can take M.2 SATA, M.2 NVMe drives, it can take both form factors. That's an advantage as well. If you open up the box, you see all these bags here, I'm showing you pictures as I'm talking, but you can see those bags, and if you open up all those bags, it does come with multiple cords and things like that that add to the cost. Like you get, you know, you can connect either USB-C on one end, and then it gives you a USB-A cord as well. So, but overall, that's not really what makes this. It's just the build quality and also being able to take both form factors of, of the M.2 drives. Um, or the, the two different types of M.2 SATA and NVMe drives, all right? But overall, I, I highly recommend this if you wanna pick it up. So now, the, but that's not what we're talking about. So I, I went ahead and here's an Inland QN322 drive right here. And I'll show you some pictures of it over here. You can see on my screen, it's, it's a very inexpensive drive. It's about $43.99 for a full terabyte. In fact, you can get two terabytes for $83.99, so it's not bad. And uh, it says it's up to 2,100 megabytes per second, right? All right, so if I put an NVMe drive just like that one inside of this case right here, look at my screen, I get 770 on the writes and I get 810 megabytes per second on the reads, right? So a lot of people are, a lot of people ask me, they say, well, that's a 10 gigabit per second connection. Why are you only getting 800 megabytes per second with an NVMe drive? Well, there's overhead, right? First of all, 10 gigabits per second, you have to divide that by eight, you know, that's bytes to bits and stuff. And then, it, so theoretically, you can get about 1,250 megabytes per second out of an enclosure like this, but that's not realistic. You have overhead and everything else. So it's always gonna be like around 800, you know, somewhere in that range, even with an NVMe drive. So, you know, you can buy NVMe, NVMe drives that are way more expensive than this one and way faster than this one, but you shouldn't when you're gonna put it in an enclosure like this, right? Now, if you're gonna be buying enclosures, and I have videos on this one, check it out, but this is a 40 gigabit per second um, Acasis one, and this is basically a lot more expensive, but you can get up to 3,000, somewhere in that range, megabytes per second on an enclosure like this. But if you're using one of these cheaper enclosures that tends to be 100 bucks cheaper, even more, <laughs> even more than that, um, you're only gonna get about 800, all right? So that's what we're talking about. But why would I put then, why would, no, let me go over here. So here's the, let me find the drive. I'm going all over the place here. Um, this is the one terabyte SATA drive that I put in, right? This is 11 drive. So this is not NVMe, this is an M.2 SATA drive. And I actually installed it into this system right here. And I'm gonna show you what I get here. So let me go ahead and plug it in and then let me just show you what I got. All right, if you look at my screen over here, you're gonna see that it's 324 only on the writes and then the reads are 354 megabytes per second, all right? So it's basically less than half if I put an NVMe drive in there, all right? So it's gonna be less than half that speed. So why in the world would I do it? Well, to answer the question, it's gonna come down to a couple reasons, but number one, it's gonna really come down to heat, all right? 
When you deal with NVMe drives in, in kind of fairly inexpensive enclosures, you're gonna get a lot of heat, all right? So even when you plug the thing in, even if you're not moving data to it, it's gonna be warm, sometimes hot to the touch, the enclosure will be, because it's got a lot of heat in there. Um, you have to know what you're doing to get the, the thermal pad right and then touching the aluminum, all that kind of stuff for it to be, you know, make, make sense. Now the heat overall is not a huge issue, but when you start downloading a lot of stuff over a lot of time, let's say you're doing a terabyte of, of downloads or something, or 50 gigabytes, you're gonna get a lot of heat, and the heat tends to make the drive get slower. So overall, you're gonna see your speeds kind of decrease, and a lot of times they go down and sometimes even below the speed of the SATA drive. And one more thing about the heat before I show you something else here is, is, is over time that heat can make the drive fail, right? So the NVMe drives can fail if they're in a very cheap enclosure and uh, they get really, really hot all the time. And not only that, the enclosures can fail because they have electronics too. So with that heat, it can cause problems both on the SSD drive with the NVMe drives and also the enclosures and something can fail there where with SATA drives, they run so cool, it's usually not the case. So the SATA drive is only 324, right? Which I just showed you. But the SATA drive itself doesn't get that hot and it seems to maintain that heat pretty well. What I've noticed over time is they're just really consistent. So when I'm using my SATA drives, basically they work just really, they're really, you know, they work really well for me and uh, overall they don't get hot and the speed is very consistent. And I'm gonna show you in a second how fast I mean, it's nice to have the 800, and, don't, and I do have all these other enclosures for when I need it, right? If I'm moving a ton of files and I want super fast storage, I'll buy super fast storage. That's, that's no matter what, I'll do that for sure. You need it and sometimes if you're moving large files all the time. But most of us are not like that. We use, do small files or we do you know, up to maybe five gigabyte file transfers, and then SATA is just fine. Let me just show you what I mean. On my screen, here's the Ugreen drive right here, and here's a test folder. Now, in, inside this test folder, I have a folder here. I'm gonna open it up. It's got like 30 or 40 different small files. They're all like a half a megabyte each, nothing big. But if I go ahead and move this over here, and I'm, I'm gonna say one, two, three, then drop it in. So one, two, three, drop. Look at it, it's less than a second. It takes like a microsecond to copy all those files, all right? That's typical of people's use, right? Well, here's a wave file up here. This is 239 megabytes. It's a little bit bigger file. Let's go ahead and one, two, three, drop. About a second or less, right? Maybe even less than a second there. Now even here, here we got three different files here. These are all fairly large, over you know, 2.1 gigabytes, 1.82, 1.27. So let's go ahead and do this over here. One, two, three, drop. Now we're gonna see if I drop those big ones in, you can see up here it's taking some time, right? It says about 10 seconds. Overall, this is gonna take about 12 seconds or so. So it's, it's doing its thing here as it goes along. And uh, you know, obviously I'm touching it right now, nothing's getting hot or anything like that. So it's gonna be done here. It took about 10, 12 to 15 seconds. So overall though, that's a typical use, right? That's about what I do. I'm doing a small video and then I'm copying maybe five to 10 gigabytes at most. And it's gonna take either 12 seconds or it's gonna take maybe three seconds on a way faster one. But the time difference is not that bad. So obviously that's why I don't care about SADA is overall it does a good job for me. Okay, so we're gonna wrap this up. So overall, obviously you see that I do a whole bunch of different videos here and I use all these different fast SSD enclosures and all this other stuff, right? I'm not telling you to go out and just only do SATA. That's not what I'm saying here. But if you're like me and you have a, different, a whole bunch of different enclosures that you deal with, and I have, I do build SATA ones. I mean, number one, I save a little bit of money, not much, a little bit. But number two, I also then go ahead and I run really cool and I can buy sometimes the enclosures for cheaper and stuff. So it's not a big difference, right? But for me, I like using them because like I said, I know that they're consistent. I don't have to worry about things failing on me. And uh, overall, I just have better success with them on small projects and I just don't need that extra speed. So there you go. That's the only reason you'd really consider that. If you know you need the faster ones, get the faster ones. If you're someone that does you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 terabytes um, or you know, gigabytes, I'm sorry, gigabytes of data or you know, a terabyte a day or something, get the fast ones. You'll be waiting a long time for these. But if you're somebody that's a normal user that does, you know, up to maybe five gigabytes a day of data transfer, the SATA is way faster. I mean, you blink and it's done. You know, you don't much, nobody needs much faster than that. I mean, unless you're doing something that you know you do. All right, I hope this helped. I hope this helps everybody out there and we'll talk to everybody soon. I make videos all the time, all crazy ones like this, but this one's a little bit more off the beaten trail, I know. It's just kind of something I thought about. I just wanted to kind of answer the question. So we'll talk to you soon. Peace.